I dual class as a website designer and social media marketer. So I wanted to show you one of the most important things you can do on your website to get shares on social media. And that's adding social metadata. There are a lot of ways to add in social metadata, but I'm going to show you the easiest way I know. In case you don't already know what social metadata is, here is the same blog post shared on Facebook. The one on the left doesn't have any social metadata. The one on the right has the social metadata set up. The one on the right looks way more professional and it doesn't just ask people to click on a mystery link. So it's gonna do a lot better on social media. Each social media platform has its own way of showing your website's data. For example, Facebook uses Facebook Open Graph, Twitter uses Twitter cards, and Pinterest uses Pinterest Rich Pins. Other platforms have their own variations, but they tend to follow the rules of the big guys. So if you get these three done, you'll be fine. My favorite plugin to use for adding social metadata is All-in-One SEO Pack. Many SEO plugins have a way to set up social metadata, so if you already have an SEO plugin installed on your website, just do a quick search to see if you can add in social metadata using that existing plugin. I'm going to go through step-by-step -step how you can use All-in-One SEO Pack to add social metadata to your, to, to your website. Unfortunately, All-in-One SEO Pack can't do all the different types of Pinterest rich pin but I'll recommend some plugins for that at the end. Once you've downloaded and activated All-in-One SEO Pack, head on over to Feature Managers. Scroll down until you see Social Meta and then click Activate. You'll now see a Social Meta menu item under All-in-One SEO. I'm gonna walk you through a quick guide and I will show you how I recommend you set up your website. It varies somewhat depending on clients, but this tutorial will definitely work to get at least your website up to speed. In the very first panel you see, called General Settings, I usually leave the defaults alone. Most themes do well with this setup, though I've seen some cool uses of short codes that show the category and the title. But just to be clear, I usually leave the first two boxes unchecked and the third one checked. In the second page, which is the homepage settings, if you've already set up your website with SEO descriptions and everything using the general all-in-one SEO settings, you can check that first AIO SEO title description checkbox. I don't because I usually like to pick some sort of description that's aimed more towards people. I find that a lot of SEO is aimed more towards getting Google to be able to read the website, but this is really where I want to entice a human being to click on this link. The most important thing to do in this section is add a homepage image. A lot of default images set for homepages aren't really representative of the business, so make sure you add something enticing that's branded to that page. In the image settings, select an appropriate image source. You'll see a drop-down menu. Please don't select default image. This will set the image to be the same on every page, and you definitely don't want to do that. Each blog post should have its own separate image so that it doesn't look like you're sharing the same thing over and over. I usually recommend you either select featured image or image from custom field. Featured image is great if you have a customer who's going to be managing the website and they're not particularly tech savvy. If social media marketing is going to be a big part of their marketing, strategy, I really recommend that you use image from custom field. That way you can set up a separate image than the default image for their social media marketing purposes. If you decide to use image from custom field, give that field a name here so your customer will know where to add that link. 
Next, please make sure you check the box next to the use default if no image is found. Then upload a default image. That way, if your client forgets to add an image in a specific blog post, the image will still show up and all your hard work that you've done up till now has not been lost. The next section is the social profile links. Check in all the client's social media channels in there. You can see here I have Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+, LinkedIn. I'd even check in um, Reddit if that was an option I was using and stumble upon even those little ones. Next, select whether or not this website is representing an organization or a person. If, for example, this is a website for a musician, it might be a great idea to have it be a person, but for almost every website, you're going to want to select organization. One piece I see missing a lot is the associated name. For example, my business's name is Vireo Media. So I want to put in Vireo Media rather than VireoMedia.com or uh, Facebook, Vireo Media, any other combination of the words. My business name is Vireo Media, so in the associated name, I'm going to stick that there. The next section is the trickiest part, but it's really not so bad. This is where you'll need to find the Facebook admin ID and Facebook app ID for your client. One mistake I often see is that people try to pull up a Facebook admin ID for a profile. You can only pull a Facebook admin ID for a public page. So before you try to set up the Facebook settings, make sure that the business you are creating, a, um, creating this website for has a public Facebook page. To find the Facebook ID, use the link findmyfbid.com. Once you go to that page, drop in their official Facebook URL. So for example, facebook.com slash design is my Facebook page. And then a string of numbers will come up that you'll want to copy and paste back into All-in-One SEO. To find their app ID, you'll need to have admin access to the page. So, once you have admin access to their Facebook page, go to developers.facebook.com slash apps. I'll drop both of these links in, in my blog post so that you can have access to them and won't need to write them down. Once you go to that developers panel on Facebook, you'll see a page that looks like this. If there's not an existing app for that Facebook page yet, click on this green button in the upper right hand corner that says add new app. Fill in the information. The display name should be the company name and not whatever social link you, you're going to use. For example, if the company's name's Coca-Cola, but their Twitter handle is Coca-Cola Company, you would want to use the name Coca-Cola. Next, add an email. And then under category, there's a, quite a few sections. I find that the business option is a great catch-all, but take a look at the different options they have there to see if there's something more appropriate. Once they've clicked on the Create App option, they'll be led to a page that looks like this. You'll see a string of numbers up at the top. You'll want to copy that and paste it into All-in-One SEO. You can see now I have filled in the Facebook admin ID, which came from that first link, and the Facebook app ID, which came from that second um, URL and you need admin access for. Next, I want to tell Facebook what type of website this is whether it's a blog, a website, or an article. For the purposes of this demo, this website's a blog, but for most business websites, you'd want to select website. The next thing, I actually disagree with the default settings for all-in-one SEO. I prefer to uncheck the automatically generate article tags. 
I do this because often when I'm doing more in-depth social media marketing campaigns, this kind of trips me up and I'd rather have more control later on. For the next section, you're going to want to tell Facebook which pages you want to be able to share on social media. So, I've selected posts and pages. I don't want, I will never just be sharing the images for my website, so I make sure that the media is unchecked. I know a lot of website designers have a portfolio section of their website. Be sure that that's set up so that that page will be shareable as well. So for example, if I had a portfolio section, there might be another uh, item there that says portfolio. Next for the show publisher on articles, if you would like to use the same name for all of your articles, fill this in. So for example, if it was just my company website, I could put Vireo Media in here. I leave that blank so that I can have more control later. And if I ever have a guest blogger on my article, then th their social media links can pop up when that article is shared. That's a great way to sweeten the pot if you're ever doing guest blogging on your website. Next, I always make sure to check this checkbox. I want people to be able to find my social media channel wherever my posts are shared, even if they're not shared directly from my Facebook page. So this is a checkbox that you definitely want checked. Next, if you scroll down a little, you'll see that you can choose the post object type and pages object type. For 99% of websites, I recommend selecting article for the post object type and website for the pages type. This is really telling Facebook how you want to represent your information. There are other options, but these are great defaults that will always get the job done. All right, we're down to the last section, which is the Twitter settings. For the default Twitter card, Please, 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 please select Summary Large Image. There is another option, but it's absolutely garbage. I'm not really sure why somebody would use it because it doesn't show an image and it actually can hurt your social media campaigns. Please make sure that you select some Summary Large Image. Next, where it says Twitter site, you're going to want to put in your Twitter URL. So for Vireo Media, that's twitter.com slash Media. Below that, be sure to check the checkbox that says Show Twitter Author. And then, very last item, the Twitter domain. This is how I want my website to be represented on social media. You want to keep this one simple. You don't want to put in www or https or any of that. So for example, for this demo website, it's just warbling.vireostudio.com. All right. Hopefully everything went well, but I have a tool that can help you fix anything that went wrong. You'll also want to do this as a last step because this is how you can get your website um, indexed on Facebook way faster than if you just let it happen organically. So to figure out if there are any issues in that process, go to developers.facebook.com slash tools slash debug. This will tell you if there are any issues that you need to resolve, and it will also start showing you how your social media posts are going to show, whether you share them or somebody else does. Once you have finished up with the Facebook debugger, head on over to the Twitter debugger. I always recommend that you do Facebook first because you're going to catch most of the issues on Facebook and Facebook has a much wider resource for fixing those issues than Twitter. So once you've finished up with Facebook, go to cards-dev.twitter.com slash validator. And once you submit to that validator, you will now have official Twitter cards for your website. All right. Last piece of the puzzle is Pinterest. All right, we're on to the last piece of the puzzle, Pinterest. Pinterest actually has six very distinct types of rich pins. Not all of them use the same schema markup, and so you can't use the same blanket system as you can for Twitter and Facebook. 
So there are six different types. You can have an app, a movie, a recipe, an article, a product, or a place. If you're doing a blog and the only type of pin that's going to be on your website is article, you're all set. All-in-one SEO will get the job done for Pinterest rich pins if you have all-in-one SEO. So if that's the type of blog posts you have, go to developers.pinterest.com slash tools slash URL dash debugger. And you'll be able to submit for rich pins that way. If your website does not just have articles, and for example, it's a recipe blog, I'm gonna show you some more plugins that you can use to get that job done. All right, if your website is for an app, as long as your app is registered with an official app store, it should show up if it's shared from that app store. If your website is doing movie indexing, I don't actually know how to do that. I haven't actually ever had to do a website that would advertise movies. So if you have a plugin for that, I would love to hear about it. For recipes, my favorite plugin to use is Yumly Rich Pins. You can see how the markup works here. It shows the ingredients and the serving size, and it'll even show caloric and dietary information. For example, I have the tag dairy-free, and so that shows up for Pinterest rich pins. For articles, we've already set that up using all-in-one SEO. So if you just have articles, all-in-one SEO gets the job done. If you have an e-commerce store, each e-commerce system will have its own way of setting up rich pins. If you're using WooCommerce, I recommend using WP SEO Pinterest rich pins for WooCommerce. The last one, I'm actually really looking for a recommendation. I have some travel blogs and right now I use manual schema markup, but I would love to be able to use a rich pin in, or I would rather use a plugin if there is one available. All right. If you have any questions, you can either hit me up on Twitter at Vireo Media or leave a comment on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. Have a great day.